How's everyone doing today? Welcome back to On The Ball. Welcome back to the last of our reaction series where we'll be reacting to our pre-season predictions regarding all the leagues in Europe, the golden boots, all the European titles as well. Uh, so let's get straight into it and see how we did. Let's go to the Champions League winners. Oh, wow. I got it spot on. I actually didn't know. I actually didn't know. Come on. <laughs> Um, it's a great, good prediction. Madrid with their fit for fifteenth, fifteenth, uh, yeah, Champions League title. Um, obviously, great win against um, Dortmund. Well, I thought Dortmund were unlucky, weren't they, in the final? Mm. But you know, against Madrid, you don't take your chances. You're always going to get punished. I've yeah. seen that script how many times now? Yeah, well, pretty much every single round of every single Champions League for the past five years. Yeah, literally. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're watching the game, thinking, how are Madrid going to overcome yeah. this? But they always seem to do it. Probably lucky. They did get past City, you would say, but that was probably the only time they looked in jeopardy. Yeah, well, to be honest, in the, in the Dortmund game, Dortmund could have been one or two goals up in the first half and it mm. could have been a different game, but didn't take their chances as we've seen. And I think the, the Man City game was probably that, just times two, basically. Yeah, essentially. City will be keeping themselves. Obviously, if City beat, win, beat Madrid, I think they go on to win the whole thing. But obviously, Madrid won it on penalties, didn't they, that leg? So... Uh, unfortunately, my prediction went out in the quarters, but Madrid, there you go. Winners. Come on, spot on. Let's move on to our Europa League predictions. Sim went for Roma. He could back Jose Mourinho to do the job. Couldn't do it. Well, he got um, sacked. He got sacked. <laughs> Was, were they out of the Europa League before he got no, sacked? No, uh, no, they weren't. They got to the semis. They got to the semis. They lost to Leverkusen in the semis. That was right, yeah. And I went for Liverpool, who did go out to the eventual winners, Atalanta. That was a big surprise, wasn't it? They lost 3-0 at home. Um, and that was at the moment where their season was kind of falling apart, wasn't it? Yeah, that was like the start of their collapse. So they went out in the quarterfinals. Um, yeah, but Roma went a bit further in the semis, so I'll take that. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> You're taking that as a win, are you? <laughs> little win, little wins, uh, as you can get it. Uh, Conference League, we both went for the same Aston Villa um, they should have won it, let's be honest. Olympiacos won it, which is great for them. I think the first Greek team to win a European tournament. Uh, so unbelievable for them. I think they won it on their rivals' ground as well, which the mm -hmm. final was on. Mm -hmm. Aston Villa going out to Olympiacos in the semis. I mean, that was that was disgraceful from Villa. But it was quite convincing though, wasn't it, in the end? Yeah. Well, they, lost quite, quite, they lost by two goals, wasn't it, away? And then yeah. at home, did they lose two I think they lost at home as well, lost, yeah. They lost at home, so it was quite a convincing exit. It was quite, kind of... The end of season, even though they made top four, results-wise, they did kind of collapse, didn't they, at the end of the season. So um, they'll be a bit annoyed. I think, again, under Unai Emre, he's got such a great record in these tournaments. So going out in the semis will be frustrating. Obviously, that was our prediction. It wasn't a terrible one, but they just didn't, couldn't make those extra that extra step. Yeah. Uh, Serie A, we went for both. We went for AC Milan. Inter Milan obviously won it very convincingly, didn't they? They won it with like five or six games to spare. Um, I think they won it against AC Milan at the San Siro. That mm -hmm. was the game they actually won it by. Back Milan, to back into, aren't they now? Yeah, back to back. No, Napoli won it last year. Oh, of course. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Um, they finished second last year. AC Milan finished second on 75 points. I mean, it wasn't the greatest season for them, but they still finished second in the Champions League for next year. New manager in. Um, but why? I can't remember why. Why did we think that AC Milan were going to win it? I don't know. They made some decent signings. Obviously, um, the season before. Well they, well, they won it. So it was them, then AC. and then It was AC, Napoli, Inter, yeah. Yeah. No, so, wasn't it not Inter? No, Napoli, Inter was Inter? one before Conte. Because oh, okay. Conte yeah. won it. Yeah, 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 And then he left. So, yeah, because AC Milan won it under the new... Uh, who was it? The new Italy manager, was it? Oh, no, he won it with Napoli, sorry. But he did win it. Not, they won it not so long ago. Um, so I, I guess, I'm not sure. We were thinking they made some good signs. Like Loftus-Cheek they signed, didn't they? They signed a few who actually had pretty good season. But... And also, maybe Inter had to make some sales again, as they usually do. Onana left. We thought, uh, are they going to start to struggle? But Inter always find a way. They're actually quite a well-run club. Yeah. I know they've had to sell a few players, but they recruit quite smartly and always keep themselves competitive. And obviously, last year, they got to a Champions League final. And obviously, they end up winning the league. So, Inzaghi's doing a great job. An unbelievable job. And I think that if he has... I mean, you've got to say that probably teams around Europe that are going to be looking for a manager maybe next summer um, he's going to be one of the most sought after managers um, at some point yeah if he, asks if he wants to leave Inter but yeah. I think he's, he's doing a really good thing but yeah he did obviously a very good job at Lazio beforehand mm. as well um, following Conte was never going to be easy but mm. he's actually done a really good job at it yeah um, absolutely so fair play to him they keep, we keep losing strikers as well like Lukaku has, has come and gone like Dzeko they, they had to replace him and then he's gone and so now they're playing 
obviously Martinez is such a big part of that strike partnership, but they had Arnautovic this season who, you know, has been a good backup striker. So they have to always find creative solutions, but they're very good at it. Yeah, absolutely. La Liga, uh, this was a pretty straightforward and simple one. Real Madrid, uh, they won it with quite a few games to spare. Barcelona obviously finishing second. Barcelona won it last year, didn't they? They did win it last year, but I think that all's just not well at Barca. I think they just won it last year because Real Madrid just had a bit of a drop-off. Mm. Uh, Real Madrid are the clear be best team in Spain, in my opinion. And you're looking at Mbappe <laughs> joining them for next I year. I mean, that is a scary thought, isn't it? How's it how are they going to bloody fit him in? Like Vinicius, Rodrigo, Bellingham, and now you're yeah. literally shoehorning in Mbappe there. It's scary. Surely how someone's going to have to be the full guy. I don't know what that may, unless oh, they have a different formation they're going to play next season, but I don't know. But I think Don Carlo, man, what what a second um, Madrid stint he has had. Two Champions Leagues. I think this is his second league title now yeah. since he re-signed. And considering three or four years ago, you know, you know, he was struggling. He, he struggled at Bayern. Uh, he didn't do very well at Napoli as well. Everton. Then at Everton. Obviously, he did quite well at Everton. If you look at him now, you, you have to say he probably did a good job. But it wasn't exactly he was like getting in the top four or anything. He was doing well, but he was still mid-table, like struggling a bit. And like this Madrid thing just came out of nowhere. You probably thought he was going to be there for a year. It's like a stopgap before they uh, find a new manager. But next season, he's going to go into what I think his fourth season as yeah. uh, as, as Madrid manager in his second stint. And um you know, for a manager who a lot of people thought was finished or over the hill, unbelievable uh, that he's got the two long, Champions Leagues and two league titles. The longevity that he's had. The first Champions League that he won was back in 2002, I believe. Yeah, and uh, AC Milan. Yeah. Uh, and we're sitting here in 2024 and he's just won his fifth Champions League. So, I mean, the longevity of the man, I've never seen anything quite like it. And Mourinho said he's not a social media manager. Mm. He does. He look what he does. To be fair, he, look, obviously it helps when you have the best players in, in Europe. But he do, he doesn't like do too much like over tactical work in terms of going forward. He gives Vinicius and Rodrigo and Bellingham just that freedom when they're in that final third to find their own solutions. But what he does do very well uh, in terms of his tactics is that he tailors tactics for each specific team. He doesn't have a you know a, a distinct style of play, mm. Carlo Ancelotti. I was um, I was reading about him about specific tactics that he's given to against uh, particular opponents, and they seem to be completely different ends of the spectrum. One team he tells to press, one team he says sit off. You know, he's just a genius in that sense. But it's so different to like if you look at the top managers, let's say in the Prem at the moment, like Klopp and Guardiola, yeah. it's, and even like people like Conte and whatever, so tactical focused, and Arteta as well, like so focused on the philosophy and the way of playing. Like Carlo is just so different. And it seems to be working for him. And maybe he shows in this modern game, you can have more of that approach where everyone thinks it's like, you know, not it's dead, essentially. Yeah, I would like to see like what would happen if he didn't have maybe uh, the literally the best player in probably mm. a lot of positions in, in Europe. I think that definitely yeah, helps. Yeah, to be fair, he's still like, you know, people like Nacho are playing uh, at the back often. Like, he hasn't had all his own way. He's had a lot of injuries at centre-back. Had to play Chiromani there quite a lot. I mean, so he could have played Militao. Nacho's been the captain this year and he got man of the match in the Champions League I final. I he's brilliant. I'm not saying he's bad. I'm just saying a lot of people wouldn't have say he's one of the best. Mm, yeah. You know, so you've had to some, some be a bit creative, but what a squad and a young squad as well. That's the key thing. Yeah, it's Jude Bellingham, finding. obviously, which we didn't mention, who's just like come on leaps and bounds since uh, leaving Borussia Dortmund to be one of the leading goal scorers, I think, in the in, in um, La Liga. But anyway, let's go on to the Bundesliga. Both of us went for Bayern Munich. Obviously, it was the obvious option. Start. But Borussia, uh, uh, sorry, Bayer Leverkusen absolutely romped this league, unbeaten for the first time ever in Bundesliga history. Uh, they did fall short of the unbeaten treble, didn't they? Not winning the Europa League. Mm, but, they but, in but they went unbeaten in the Bundesliga, won the cup as well. Um, Jabby Alonso, what an unbelievable job he's done. He's going to go probably down in the history books as one of the best managerial uh, jobs, I th probably. I think so. I think um, so. Uh, in terms of, in your first, like, well, obviously he came in midway through last season and got them from near the bottom to a Europa League spot. Yeah. Got them to Euro a Europa League uh, fi uh, semi-final last season as well. And then this season, to do a whole season unbeaten, like just like that in your first kind of full season in management, um, not first full season in management, but first kind of full, well, for first full season at Leverkusen is an astonishing achievement. And to do it in the way they did as well, playing the football they have, it's exciting possession based like they're a hybrid of like a possession based system but also in transition they are electric as well Alonso is an absolute phenomenon and there's obviously a reason why 
some of the big, all the big clubs were after him. Obviously, when he when uh, they, when not he became available and they were looking for a manager, but he's actually looking to stay. I would be intrigued if uh, he goes does something special in the Champions League next season. Like, you know, why not? You know what? He's turned down the Liverpool job. He's turned down the Bayern Munich job uh, to stay at Leverkusen next season. Do you feel like? Being at a club like Leverkusen, you should go out at the top, or do you think like just keep going and see if you can create even more history? I think, considering he hasn't, they haven't played in the Champions League yet. I think give it another season in the Champions League, and if you do something special there, then I think what more can you do, kind of thing? Because obviously you could win loads of Bundesliga, but it might, might not mean as much potentially. I mean, I guess winning loads of Bundesliga in Germany. Um, at, as at Leverkusen, surely that gets more respect than obviously winning it with Bayern. So that does actually mean something more. So I, I guess I feel there's no real reason to leave as much as as long as he feels like his ambitions are being met and they can maybe competitive in the Champions League. We'll see how we do in the Champions League next season. Then I think there's no real reason to to leave because he is creating history. But I think at some point, I don't think he's going to be at Leverkusen for ten years. I think point. I think I know how it's going to play out. I think as soon as he's ready to leave Leverkusen. And that is when Carlo Ancelotti hangs up his, uh, well, mm-hmm. I say boots, but his, uh, you know, he goes to retire from management and he goes and takes over Real Madrid. Um, I think that's what it's going to be. I wouldn't be surprised at all yeah. if that's how it goes. Um, but next season, it's company against Javi Alonso for the Bundesliga title. I think uh, Leverkusen, t- could they go back to back? Why not? I mean, obviously Bayern are going to start favourites and I'm sure they'll make some signings, but I'm looking at Bayern. I'm not convinced that companies guaranteed to overtake Le- Alonso next season, considering how they're playing. As, as, as long as Leverkusen don't lose any big stars, even if they do, I back them to replace them effectively, mm. to be honest. So I'm, I'm thinking Le- Leverkusen got a good chance back to back. All right, let's go to the French League. Obviously, we went for PSG. PSG did win it uh, with 76 points. Uh, they weren't the greatest team this with year, 76 PSG. 76 points? Yeah, that's it. Wow. 10 draws for PSG this season. That is mad, isn't it? Yeah. Um, they, they did all right in the Champions League, obviously got to the semi-final. Probably very disappointed that they didn't over, uh, get over the line with uh, Borussia Dortmund with the amount of times they hit the post and the chances that they had. I mean, on the balance of play, they should have won that game, in my opinion. But in the league, they got over the line and won it, but I don't think it was as convincing as probably they would have liked. Yeah, I don't think so either. And um, there's been a lot of talk about Luis Enrique, whether they want him to stay on. Obviously, it's a very hard job. Um, PSG, no one really has him more than two years, but it sounds like they're going to give him another year. Obviously, he did get to the semi finals of the Champions League, but they were really disappointing over both legs um, against Dortmund. I thought Dortmund deserved it in both uh, in both legs. So uh, I think they were massive favourites going into that game. And also, every year, they've been knocked out, right? But usually, they've been knocked out by like a Real Madrid or a big team, Barcelona or something like that. But this season, um, to, you know, they were not going to have a better chance than Dortmund in the semi-finals of getting to another final. The fact that they screwed that up will be very, very frustrating. And as well, I thought against Barca in the, in the knockouts as well, they could have easily lost if it wasn't for a red card, which uh, helped them out in the second yeah. leg. And they were yeah. losing that tie and it changed everything. So... Um, <laughs> I think Enrique is under pressure next season to deliver. Yeah, absolutely. As every manager is in the Champions League for PSG, that's just the way it goes over there. But let's move on to the Golden Boots Champions League. We both went for Erling Haaland, mm-hmm. but it was Harry Kane uh, with a sensational season for Harry. Uh, where did Haaland finish? He finished two goals behind Kane with six goals. So he was equal with Griezmann, uh, Vinicius Jr. and Kylian Mbappe and Harry Kane both on eight goals. Okay, so uh, obviously I think if Madrid, if City beat Madrid, maybe Haaland does end up top goal scorer. They end up going out, so it was uh, end up being Harry Kane. Obviously, brilliant for Kane, but and semi finals as well, not a bad uh, for his first year in um, Champions League with Bayern Munich. But Haaland wasn't the worst prediction, but didn't quite pan out for us. Mm. Uh, Serie A, Sim went for Lautaro Martinez and got it absolutely spot Come on. on. I went for Ossiman, who was obviously the top goal scorer last season in a title winning side for Napoli. This year, only 15 goals. Uh, there was the AFCON, which he was at as well, so missed a chunk of the season. And I think he had a couple of injuries this season as well. So um, Napoli was very, were very disappointing, weren't they? It's mad. Uh, Napoli are the reigning champions, and there are going to be nine Serie A teams in Europe next season, and Napoli aren't going to be one of them. Wow. So it's, uh, that's crazy how much the drop there has been a drop off there for Napoli. But Conte is is going to be there next season, so it's interesting to see how they how they do. Yeah, what do you think? Do you think they, that he goes and wins the league in his first year? Well, they're not in Europe. 
So, and that's what Conte loves. Mm. He does love not being in Europe. So I, w- I would say that there's going to be a massive improvement. And maybe could he get Lukaku back? You know, he's not wanted at Chelsea. Could he get him for a cheap price? Um, Ossiman Lukaku up front. Mm. I think Ossiman might leave this summer, though. It's interesting we'll see what Kvisha does. if Because um, I think Conte in Italy, he won the league with a 3-5-2. And uh, so two up top. So... Does he, does he want to put Kavisha in the centre and sell Aussie man, or does he want to pay him a 3 4 3 with Kavisha on the left? I was reading I was reading reports about Kavisha saying that they didn't want him to leave. A hundred million bid comes in from PSG, they reject it. Uh, but Kavisha got a bit got a hump, got the hump with it, and um and he wants to leave apparently. So I don't know. I don't think all's well at Napoli at the moment with the players. I think Aussie men's looking for a way out as well Aussie at the man moment. For sure. Uh, but we'll see what, you know, with Conte coming in, maybe he can change some minds. Yeah, maybe. Uh, let's go on to La Liga Golden Boot. We both went for Robert Lewandowski. He finished third on 19. The top was Artem Dovbik of Girona. Mm. Um, he won it on the last day, didn't he? Because Sorloth, I think, on the penultimate game, went ahead of him by two goals, I think. Yeah. And then on the last day, Dovbik scored, what, a hat-trick or something mm. to, to win the golden boot. A bit similar to the way Sonny won it or Harry Kane won it against Lukaku all those years ago. Yeah, exactly. Um, so brilliant for him. No one really could have predicted he was going to be top goal scorer. Sorloth as well, former Palace striker, and as well, uh, has done the rounds in Europe, but really coming into his own at Villarreal, what a season he had. With the, and four great goals against Madrid as well. So, um, didn't quite, our predictions didn't quite pan out, but would have taken a very brave man to predict those two at the top. Yeah. Bundesliga. None of us went for Harry Kane. <laughs> well, Kane wasn't, wasn't uh, at uh, Germany when we made these predictions, wasn't at Bayern, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, you went so. for Sebastian Haller. I went for Serge Gnabry. Yeah, two stinkers, I think. Um, neither of these players were in the top 22. Yeah, Haller didn't have the impact out, I hope. They signed Fulkrig, and uh, yeah. he was the one who started week in, week out. But Haller had a really strong end to last season. I thought he was going to kick on because he's quite a good goal scorer, but... Uh, he was back up all season, didn't really uh, do the business. Nabry has had a very injury hit season as well, so hasn't really been at his very best. So the top three in Germany were Harry Kane on 36, Sergio Garassi on 28, and Lewis Appender on 24. Mm. Um, Harry Kane, obviously. Yeah. What a season. Did he break the record for the most? I don't, I think, I don't know if he did, actually. I don't I think, think Lewandowski he... got 41, actually. Yeah. One year, so Kane didn't quite break it. But do you reckon he will break it one year? 100%. He's absolutely. It was too easy for him, wasn't it? The Bundesliga. Way too Ooh. easy for him. He was but unbelievable. Didn't win the league, did he? But he's still. No. But yeah, in terms of goal scored. So the curse did. of Harry Kane is real. Mm. Uh, let's go on to League uh, French uh, Golden Boot. It's mad to me that we, that we didn't say Kylian Mbappe. He because he was. We thought he was going to leave. Oh, we thought he was going to leave. We thought, we thought he was about to because he still hadn't signed his deal with PSG, and he was about to leave for uh, Madrid, mm. and uh, it never happened. We went for Conchalo Ramos, who finished joint eighth with 11 goals. Not, he didn't have the impact, maybe, that he would have hoped, that's yeah, for sure. Yeah, he wasn't... Obviously, still, obviously he's still young, but I, everyone thought he was going to come in there, be their main striker. But he actually he didn't even st- start loads of games. But um, he good, decent record for a first season. is not bad, but is he going to be able to replace Mbappe's goals now? Mbappe's going. We'll have to wait and see. PSG going to go for a massive... I, mean, I still think they'll probably win the league, but they've got to be going for a massive dip without mm. Mbappe. Uh, when you look at the players trying to step up in... Uh, I mean, they've got good players, but no one of that level. Um, the other players that were in the top four in the French League, Jonathan David, Alexander Lacazette mm. and Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. <laughs> so, so two strikers given away for free by Arsenal. <laughs> yeah. two top goal scorers Does that tell you the state of the French League? Probably. That probably uh, says a lot about it, I would say. Yeah. But anyway, those are our predictions. Those are our pre-season predictions. I think out of all those predictions that we did make... We just got one right each. One right each. Uh, uh, Real Madrid for the Champions League. Yeah. Um, yeah, but let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. We'll see you next time.